everyone, I'm Justin and this is Cinephile Studios. When I started Patreon Request, I was hoping to get recommended some films that I haven't gotten a chance to see yet, or perhaps something obscure that I've never heard of that turns out to be really great. And instead, I'm watching Mars Needs Moms. <laughs> yeah, uh, Chris requested me to review this one, so if you want to be like Chris, you can go over on Patreon right now, you can support me on there, and you can find other films to have me watch. Films that ended an entire production company. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. Uh, Mars Needs Moms. The only thing I really remember about this is, uh, well, the title. The title alone is so bad. Mars Needs Moms. Of course that's not going to be a box office success, and of course it gets bad reviews. There's no way a movie like Mars Needs Moms is going to do well on any level. There's just no way. The movie is so bad, apparently, that when I bought this copy online, and I bought it used for a couple bucks, probably less than $5, it was still in the wrapping, like no one opened it. Apparently the film was used but not even worth watching at home. So yeah, if that tells you anything, we're in for quite a treat. I've never really gotten to this one, I guess I've just been pushing it off, especially since I've seen all the other Image Movers films, so I'm definitely not against the technique uh, to a degree. I'll give the movies a chance, so why not Mars Needs Moms? Well, is it any good? Is it worth watching after all this time? Let's pop it in and find out. Well, pretty much, I think the movie got a bit of a bad rap. I think most of the negative criticism comes because the film was produced for a ridiculously large budget of $150 million, only making $39 million, and only being 88 minutes long. That's got to be up there for the most expensive film per minute. Image Movers in general got criticism for its animation style, so pretty much the movie never had a chance. But just watching it without the extra baggage, it's just another basic sci-fi flick. The film stars Seth Green as Milo, except it's only Seth Green doing the motion capture and some other kid dubbing the voice because I guess they finally realized later in production that Seth Green is an adult? However, on the Blu-ray, there was a way to watch it with Seth Green's original vocals, so that's cool. I shouldn't have said what I said, should I? I shouldn't have said what I said, should I? One night, Milo's mom gets kidnapped by Martians from Mars, since the aliens use robots to keep all the newborns disciplined. The mom's ability as a mom, I guess, are extracted and put into nanny bots, while all the male babies are sent to live in the space dumpster, along with Gribble, an 80s loving guy who got stuck on the planet himself. Iceman. No! Did you see Top Gun? It's a pretty simple plot, but the stuff I really wish they delve into, well, it never happens. There's not really anything much said about why things are done this way, or why the women are all in charge, or why they need to keep the male babies in the space dumpster. Nothing interesting is really said. It seems to be done just to service this simple story. How strong is this line? I'm a little over my goal weight right now. <laughs> It's just a weird idea for a movie, but I could see it working if it took itself a little less seriously, but there's some pretty emotional scenes in the movie. I guess they work on their own, but as a part of this animated kids film, I don't know, it fell out of place and pointless. If anything, I think this movie could have been better as a live action flick, maybe one of those Nickelodeon movies or Disney Channel movies. Come on baby, the chrysanthemum. That's not a percent. I mean, it basically is a live action film since they filmed all the actors on a soundstage. Yeah, I'm not entirely against making a film like this because I think there are ways to make it work. It's great for motion capture and live action films, and in things like Monster House or The Adventures of Tintin, the animators can at least make character designs rather than having the characters look almost human. In Mars Needs Moms, everyone is meant to look like a real human, and just like the Polar Express, it's a huge problem. It makes everything look creepy and outdated, and I think it just limits the animation potential. Cats are not supposed to eat vegetables! Maybe I'm not supposed to eat vegetables! Milo! 
In terms of set and creature design, there's nothing really new or original done. It's the same kind of dark future you've seen before. I guess that is the point, but there's gotta be a new way to do this, and if you're gonna do something repetitive, at least do something unique with it. I'm okay with Seth Green's voice being taken out because the replacement actor actually works pretty well, and Dan Fogler plays Gribble, and I've always been a big fan of his. Let's admit it though, if this movie was released today, they would have gone way overboard with the 80s references. Part of Ronald Reagan's secret astronaut program. The secret knots. There's not really anything in this movie that sticks out, but I do find this technique of filmmaking to be at least interesting, or something to talk about. The end credits have a lot of raw footage, and it's really cool to see how everything is done. However, I can't say I really miss this style of animation. It's good for Planet of the Apes or for the Ready Player One film, but I think animation needs more freedom. I have time to raise hatchlings! Huh? And the males! <laughs> they never helped! Always dancing and playing! Overall, the movie's not impressive or different from anything else that you've seen before. It's just an average sci-fi flick. But I can say that it's a well-paced movie, especially for only being 88 minutes long. Yeah, and it deserves to be 88 minutes long. There's just not much of a story there to make it any longer than it is. Uh, the interesting story is there, but they don't really take advantage of it. There's nothing really poignant being said here. So what you get is just, yeah, another average sci-fi flick. Which, I don't know, in my book, is fine, especially if you're a younger audience. I think younger kids might actually find something enjoyable about someone their age being taken by a spaceship up to Mars. I think it'd be something fun to watch, but as something that will age well or be uh, getting a comeback in a couple years, will people be saying, oh, that underrated film, Mars Needs Moms? I doubt it. I think this movie's just gonna disappear always be that weird box office bomb that happened one time. Is there anything else that I would have done differently about it? Maybe change the title? Maybe make the movie a little different? Have it be a little more interesting? Actually do it live action, for instance? I don't know. It just kind of seems like one of those ideas that no matter what you do, you're just never going to get an audience behind it, which is the biggest problem. There's just really not an audience out there for this. Any audience that there is for it is very loose and you just kind of got to get lucky with who's going to like it. I certainly think it's just fine. It's there. I'm not going to remember it in a week, which is, yeah. Thanks for watching the video and I'll see you next month with a couple more Patreon requests. Thanks for watching the video. A special thanks to Chris and Ryan for supporting me on Patreon. If you'd like to join them in getting exclusive videos and blogs, early access, and even be able to request reviews monthly, then please click on the Patreon link and thanks for the support.